So my mom says, he has been beating me. So he, Anolizwa, he beats you as who? The last thing I can remember, this is the same guy we were looking for over 10 years ago when he almost killed your daughter. And this guy says, Kweli, so anamuita na jinake. Hajai wambia we are man and wife over 15 years. Guy. Guy. And that night, he beat me. Lin hili chapwa. Aka chukua tong. He had a tong in the house. Aka i plug in. Tong? Yeah. Ya nyuele? Yes. Aka i plug in kwa steamer. Aka nichoma na hiyo. Aka ona hiyo hai jatosheka. Where? Kwa mgongo. Aka ona hiyo jatosheka. He took the iron box. He did the same. And that is when I collapsed. Lin, we struggled, but he overpowered me. Not forget, I was already attacked defenselessly. I did not, I was not aware. Yeah, yeah. and stop feeling like the, you have, stop feeling the need to want to say you so would have defended yourself. You are not aware. He raped me. Okay. And told me, pack and go. And I told him, how? My clothes are torn. <laughs> he threw a sheet to me. And I went home, I asked myself so many questions. I asked God, where are you? I have so much on my table. Why would you allow your own servant to take advantage of me and throw me outside? Hello and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, to confuse giving birth with parenthood would be a mistake uh, because I love that we are in a generation where we can talk about toxic parents. Uh, but then again, what happens when your own mother ends up sleeping and moving in together with your own husband? Uh, that's exactly the story of my guest today. And I know you might have watched it before somewhere, but she's also going to tell you about how we met. Uh, we met and I believe there are no coincidences in life. So I'm about to let her introduce herself. But before I do that, allow me to say thank you to my amazing friends at Elegance Fashion Kenya for coming through with this outfit. Sivang is sleeveless, guys. But I don't know what you guys think about it. I saw it and I loved it. And you guys, you can check their contact details here on the screen and go get your, our, you know, an outfit or two. And of course, Westwood Hotel for giving us this therapeutic space uh, so that we are able to bring you conversations that have the ability to impact lives and you know you can check them out for amazing conference rooms, restaurant, swimming pool, this garden that we are shooting at, you can hold really amazing events. Uh, and now without further ado, please allow me to let my guest today introduce herself. Good morning. Good morning. Hi mommy. I'm good. Yeah, how are you? Thank you. Uko salama? Kabisa. Kabisa, kabisa. Ay, thank God. Amen. <laughs> There are no coincidences in uh, life. Uh, this one, eh, it they was are not, just God's it, plan. It was God's plan. Pap, pap. please I introduce pap. yourself. Uh -huh. hey, mm. Good morning, good yeah. afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching us from. Yes. My good name is Martha Soipan and welcome to LNS Show. <laughs> and welcome to LNS. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You are... Like, I don't know, when we hugged, mm -hmm. I mean, I would just let you to tell Magnet. them. Like, from the first time, because I did not even know I had met you mm -hmm. earlier in mm -hmm. life. That's for you to uh, talk about. Yeah. But yesterday when we hugged, mm -hmm. I just did not know why you would not let go. Yeah. And I always say sometimes in life, I just want to provide a space for people yeah. to 
come out, like if that if God gives me a chance to be able to hug someone mm -hmm. and let them because you don't know how hugs sometimes are important. It means a lot. It means a lot. Yeah. It means a yeah. lot. So welcome mm -hmm. to uh, LNS. Yes, and of course your beautiful name, so Thank Ipan. Me, I'm going to call you so Ipan. I love that name mm -hmm. so much. Yes, and I'll tell you how it came to. Yes, in my life. In, in your life. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ibu, please take us through your journey. Um, Martha, I'll start with the names. Uh, yes. I found myself being called uh, yeah. Martha Wanjiko Kimata. Mm -hmm. Martha Wanjiko Kimata is a businesswoman. Yeah. She's a YouTuber and she's a single mother. Uh -huh. Not by choice, I quote. Not by choice. And um, her journey started in the early 80s when mm -hmm. she was born. Okay. Born in Pumwani, yeah. here in Nairobi, yeah. and raised yeah. in Dandora. Yeah is five but at the age of two my mom went to the gulf countries uh, mm -hmm. and left me under her the care of her elder sister okay so i grew up in akuru mm. so i started calling her elder sister mom mm. of which up to today i still call her mom okay but uh, at the age of 10 my mom came on her first vacation so you had not you had not seen mom since you were two. Yes, she had gone to which country? Saudi Arabia. Saudi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she came her first vacation when I was ten. Yes. And so she transferred me from Nakuru Njoro, yeah. where I used to school. Yeah. I used to school in a school called Kilimo Primary, mm -hmm. Ikondani Igaton University. So I was shifted and brought to a boarding school mm -hmm. in Thogoto, one of the best schools up to today in Kiambu County. Yes. Reverend Musa Gitau Primary School. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I schooled there. Yes. And now when when she brought me here, she left me now under her elder brother. Okay. But now her elder brother was were those uh men that really worked hard may her, uh, his soul rest in peace okay. and so my uncle was never at home he would mm -hmm. come very late and leave very early mm -hmm. in the morning mm -hmm. and i was in boarding yes. but two of her of his daughters were in the same school but day scholars mm -hmm. so every time i would close school i would go to their home for vacation yes. of which that did not last for long yeah. because it reached a point uh, my now the wife my aunt and the daughters never came to visit me never came to pick me from school and uh, before all that started we would close school or maybe go for me term yeah. and by the time I'm coming back Lena even sanitary pad I could not be given and now you see I'm at that age when you're in puberty I'll call it that way so one day I received a letter from my aunt and the daughter the elder daughter she was ahead of me and they told me that um, uh, i don't know how to quote it in english in mm. kikuyu they say let me quote it for you say it in kikuyu. you will die in poverty so you will die in poverty i dig your own grave and bury yourself yes. so i took the letter to the headmistress and uh, by that time, I, I never understood what it meant. Mm. So, mm. how old were you here? I was now eleven. That's too much yes. for an eleven-year-old. So my my headmistress, because she knew my mom was out of the country. Yes, she took me in. And I, up to today, I always say, if given an opportunity, I go to the states. I look for Mrs. Rohio. Her name is Mrs. Rowe. Yes. She's in the States yes. now. Yeah. So she took me in and I became her daughter. So every time school will close, she will send the house girl to come and pick me because she used to live sasa, within the school. But now I will stay in her house. She had a, 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 a young daughter. So me, when I was in class five, the daughter was class one. Yeah. So I would go stay at her home, be treated like you know, I would feel Nikonyumbani like the other school have closed, the, the other kids have gone home. At Aminaskia, I've gone home. Yeah. So I stayed with m Mrs. Rohio for a very long time mm -hmm. until one day it was during vacation. So our school people would hire the um, uh, multi purpose hall for weddings. So during a reception in a wedding, uh, a cousin to my mom had come to that wedding. So you see, me and the little girl of Mrs. Rohio, mm -hmm. we are just playing around the school. Mm -hmm. So she saw me and called me. And I'm like, who is this who knows me? You know, she called me Shiko. So I'm like, who is this? 
So I turned. And she was like, you can't remember me. Mm. I'm so, so, so. So unajua you remember those words ulikuwa na mbona mama ukiwa mdogo tu ulikuwa kwa auntie flani nini 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 so where are you doing in school so i told her me stay with mrs rohio so she came and talked to the headmistress mm. and she so, was told everything what happened so at this point your mom has no idea you don't communicate to yes, your mom yes yes we used i, I would write letters mm. and uh sorry there, by yeah. that time mm -hmm. I think Mrs. Rohio had already told, I'm not sure, but I think she had told her I'm staying with her. Mm. I'm not sure. So my aunt was like, this cousin of my mom was like, how comes and her mom's sisters are around, you know? And I don't know what happened because mm. I remember later I w someone came for me, yeah. and my mom's aunties, yeah. sisters, I mean. So they came for me and... Um, I, and I started going to their home this mm. this week this holiday I would go to one of them the other holiday like that when I was in I was almost clearing class eight yeah. my mom came back so when she came back and I told her everything that I've gone through she told me don't worry I'm not going back again mm. now we are going to stay how was that like for you I f I, I was over the moon I was so happy because I knew I had someone to call me mommy you know those sweet words mm. that a little girl would love or a little boy would love a parent mm, to call. Mm. So I felt everything was okay for me. But Lynn, that was not the case. My mom came and got married. So when she came and got married, every time I would school, close school, I would go home and take him to Ushago Kwa So I would return like today and tomorrow is back to school. Do I even have time with my mom? So you see, I'm still missing something. Yes. Are you understanding what yes. I'm missing? Yes. Already at the age of two, a vacuum was created. All the way. All the way. When I think that you're going to fill in the vacuum, it's not happening. A man comes in. Yes. So two years down the line, the marriage never worked. So my mom yeah. moved out. So I remember now I'm clearing school and I'm expecting my Maliza KCP, I'm, I'm Nakujiwa. Mm. So my mom comes and tells me we are not going home. Mm. I left there. Mm. We are staying in Gitaro. So we are in Gitaro mm -hmm. and the minute I get into that house, the first thing I see, I lose hope get going to school because it's poverty. So where we were living and where we've come, we are in a single room. You have to close the door, you see. So I asked my mom what had happened, and uh, she told me mm. uh, so and so. This is it was all, all uh, Vita Killer Siku. And I remember I could see, because sometimes I could leave school midterm and I could come and find her with a black eye, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. So when she decided to walk out of the marriage, so she started life alone. And you see now, it's like all her, the money she had come from Saudi Arabia, Imeisha. So I think that's why the frustration started. Mm. So my grandmother came and when she saw where we were living, she was not comfortable. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother had a plot in Karyobangi. Mm. So she told my mom, come, because I have a hotel here. I, I give you the hotel, you run, and I give you a house to live as you take care of the rest of the houses mm. so that tenants can be bay paying you. And mm. when I come, you just give me my money. Yes. So for me, I felt it was a good idea because, you see, tr the, the burden of paying her rent has been taken away by my grandmother. Yeah. So we went to Karyubangi, mm -hmm. a place called Kanyama. Yeah. And Lynn, I remember when we went there, I kept on telling God, I would really want to finish up my education and work hard and take my mom out of this place. I was never comfortable. The people who have lived in Karyumbagi those years know it's all about drugs, early pregnancy, work. You know, life is just it's just not rough. rough. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's rough. So I, I, uh, the results were out for class eight. Mm -hmm. All other kids went to school. Martha is in the house. So the same, same auntie that had seen me in school, the elder sister came to visit. Mm. And when she found I was at home, she was like, no, 
why are you not in school? We need to get a school for the time being. You get in as you look for a better school because you're not supposed to be here. So that day we looked for a school, a day school we got. She went with me, bought me uniform, and the next day I was admitted. Wow. And so I started my mm. uh, secondary school mm -hmm. in a day school in Kariobangi called, it was called uh, Riverside Girls. Mm -hmm. So I didn't stay there for long. It was only one term. So when my grandmother came, and so where I'm going to school, she ran mad. Mm. She was like, no way, mm -mm. no way. Mm -hmm. So she went to Nyahururu. She looked for a school. She got a school. She came and transferred me. And my grandmother did everything to make sure I'm in a good school. Mm. And I went to Ndorori High School, mm. where they helped each other with my mom mm. until I cleared form four. Mm -hmm. So when I cleared form four lean, I started uh, looking for jobs. And the only jobs I could get were promotions. Mm -hmm. I've worked with agency, top image agency, that, I, that time it was on Wilson. Yeah. And I remember I would, I would take two jobs. I would work during the day as a, as a, as a promoter with Safaricom, mm -hmm. you know, giving flyers around, around about. Oh. Yani around about your Westlands, mm. where mm. people can test it. Any mm. mepeana flyers. Mm. And at night I would work again with the same, same agency with Palmal BAT. That time we were promoting Palmal. Oh. So by the time we closed, mm. to work with, uh, we've been dropped at Kenya Cinema. It's around 1 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to go to Kariubangi, sleep, and by 6 a.m. again, I'm at Agakan walk to be given location where we are going to distribute the flyers mm. so that was my that that's how I, I i tried everything to make ends meet because i really wanted to change my my mom's life mm. and gold helped me because where that car hotel was uh, i was able to relocate her from that place because it was somewhere coming here and Dani, yeah. and i took her to the main stage now where all my tattoos are lighting mm. where you know kuna watu wengi yes and so she had a very nice hotel and mm. she will make money because my mom was known as the only woman who would wake up at 3 a.m ukitaka chai 3 a.m utapata chai mm. you know mm. and uh, so during that time i would go to work pass by the hotel take breakfast and go to work mm. and my mom's business went very well to an extent that she left my mom's my grandmother's car house that's the one we were given yeah. she went to a better house but me remained in that car one room i loved my grandmother mm. so i didn't want to abandon her yes so i was left there and during that car period another cousin of mine came so we mm. used to leave two of us mm -hmm. and now when shosho would come she will spend the night there because yeah. she used to come like monthly to also collect uh, her rent mm. and also see how the plot is going mm -hmm. so during this time i'm going to work coming back going to work coming back this is where i meet mr so called my first love mm -hmm. <laughs> and um i met him and uh, today i would not say i was in love today i will differentiate what love is and what is desperate love I would call it that way because this man kept on telling me I love you you're beautiful and how you're old are you here I'm now 22 okay I love you you're beautiful he would escort me to work if I get to a matatu I will not pay fair by the time I leave work Nikifika stage and Ngala he's there waiting for me something I have never experienced in your life yes and how old was he he was 32 to what me na 10 years mm -hmm. so so pan here is already <coughs> how do i call it yes. Asha korogwa yeah, yeah. so ipan ame korogwa. Yes. yeah you just reminded me now so ipan because we are going to start calling you so ipan yes. at what point do you change the name to so ipan at 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 uh Immediately after class eight, when yeah. I, I mean class form four, after yeah. working, mm -hmm. I remember I used to be told, So even when my mom came, I asked her, why do kinantis and uh, the people who know my family, they tell me I'm not a kikuyu. Mm -hmm. So she told me, yes, you're a Maasai. And where is my dad? So she told me, your dad, maybe a kokwao, according to her, because they had separated kitambo. Mm. So I told her, me, I want to see my dad. 
and by that time I was saying this because I thought I, back at the back of my mind I knew if I see my dad the the love the dad love I was lacking I would get it mm -hmm. so she told me me I'll not take you I'll draw you a map so me lini litolewa map nkambo go to nyamakema chukua gari za narok you'll alight at this stage any person you ask this name your dad was well known mm. their family was well known mm. and that is what i did mm -hmm. and let me say let me let's just tell people that when god says it is yes it is yes yes because me the person i met to ask who is i want to go to so and so was last born wakina my dad wow last born wow yes and you know he looked at me you know me i'm short I call my I used to call myself tall but that day I knew I'm not tall. Yeah, you met a tall person. Hey, I was looking at him like this. Yeah. And he's like, "Who are you looking for, Parasenteyo?" I'm like, "My name is Martha. Martha from Moya." And who is Parasenteyo to you? I'm like, "My mom told me Parasenteyo is my dad." Then he tells me, "Are you Soipan?" I'm like, "Who is Soipan?" So he, he runs before me kumbe nyumbani ni pale nimeshuka hapa na gate ni pale he runs before me and start now talking in Maasai telling people yes. so my grandmother walks out crying mm -hmm. my aunties comes out crying mm. so the minute i hug my grandmother you remember what happened yesterday yes that was how it was we cried we cried and the first thing i was told you are not mother your name is Soipan when you left here that was your name but now you still in have already taken an id yes but i said i'll take that name yeah cuz my dad died knowing her daughter is called soipan and i was told unfortunately your dad is no more and your dad never had any other kid your dad never had any other wife we've always been praying damu yetu iturudie you know, and those words yani made me realize if only I had come early. You know, I would not gone, I would not have gone through what I went through, you know, during my childhood. Because I really flashed back so many things that day. And seeing how my grandmother was happy to see me akachinja mbuzi akaita watu for me it was like a prodigal son coming, coming back, back home. home so i kept on going home because immediately when my grandmother saw me she decided now my uncles must uh, bring back everything they took away from my dad immediately he died because mm. she said her ch his child is here. here so she has every right to take over but in the Maasai culture, the way a girl is just a nobody, the case started. A case that even today is still in court land. Actually, I think three years ago, I gave up and I told God, fight for me. I, I, I don't have the strength anymore. Mm. I don't have the strength. Mm -hmm. And now my grandmother is old. She cannot even fight anymore, mm. you know. Mm. So... I meet now this guy. Yes. So I meet this guy and I'm told how beautiful I am. I'm I'm showed love, I'm pampered. And within no time I move in. It's called come we stay. And the very first day I move in, war starts. How long had you dated before you moved in? I would not say it was not long. Mm. It was not long. I can't really recall but it was not long. So, and you know, beating starts by one cast slap and a kiss. I love you, baby. Don't uh, you? You're the one who provoked me. So you cool down. Tomorrow, two more slaps. Why do you always provoke me, baby? You know I love you. You cool down. You know, and it kept on. It kept on. It kept on. It kept on. And I remember one day I was not working. So the sister-in-law, uh, the wife to the brother, told me, uh, <coughs> Mama so-and-so have come now, the, 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 the mother to the man, yes. but 
<coughs> she's at our elder sister. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go and say hi? So because I had nothing to do, we decided we go. It was just a walking distance. So we went. We got there. She had come. And when we got there, the elder sister had knew me already. So the, the mother asked, and who is this beautiful girl? But that time I was very tiny, I was very small. So this sister in law we had come with, she said, she's the wife to so and so. And the mother pulled me and told me, sit here. And she told me in Kikuyu, no, the koi wo the no mudrumewaga. With all this beauty, you lacked a man? Yes. Do you think that was a red flag? Today I know it was a red flag, but that time I was naive. Mm. I didn't know. Mm. But Majili Jakwa Tumbo, Lin, I could I was eagerly waiting to talk a kwai nyumba mm. and I asked my sister in law, why did Made ask me this? Because me I know you're taken to a mother in law, she's supposed to be happy that the son is getting married, you know, or already is married. So the sister in law told me when we were on our way back home. I do want to tell you, because uh, even me, ningekuwa kwa shida ni meari. You are not the first woman to be brought into this house. Na wengine wametoka huku, ato wameumizo zaidi. Wow. So, and this time, sasa nikianza kupigwa, it had reached a point. Usivai longi. I leave work. I receive a call. If you've ever worked with promotions, calls come in. Mumetoka job, jioni mumeambo, kesho munapatana agakano. A call come at around 8. Munambo, change of plan. You'll meet in Westlands, you know. And those calls ilikuwa zinafanya ni chapwe. Lean, I was being beaten to an extent. My body, kama singe chapwe, na uliza kweli leo si chapwe. Unajua, ili chapwe. It's either nime chapwe, nime receive a call. Nime chapwe, sijampatia mshara yangu. Nimenyanganyo simu wameenda kukunywa. Nimeletewa wanawake kwa nyumba. I, I went through all manners of hell. And I remember the, there's a time he beat me. Akaona aitosheki. So that was when nimetoka, tukampata kwa nyumba, kaniuliza umetoka wapi. Yeah. So the sister in law, akajibu wapana, tulenda kuona madhe. Who gave you permission? So, brother Aki Aka, Aka Sema, Nimi Nili Sema Wanda Aka Salimi Ema, then you are prevent Vita. Mm. So, we, me, I thought, story may, imeisha. Mm. But, alingojia kila mtu walale. Tulukwa tunaishi ploti yao. We had been given one car room. Yeah. So, at night, he woke up. What were you discussing? What were you told? You know, and Lina was like, Nothing. Utasema. Utasema. Lina was beat. Lina was beaten. And you know how he used to beat me? He would switch off the lights. Undress me. It's like he was a devil. Missy Mwoni, but Niona, he would not miss hitting me. And that night, he beat me. Linili chapo. Akachukua tong. He had a tong in the house. Akai plug in. Tong? Yeah. Yanyuele. Yes. Akai plug in kwa steamer. Akanichoma nayo. Akaona hiyo haijatosheka. Where? Kwa mgongo. Akaona hiyo haijatosheka. He took the iron box. He did the same. And that is when I collapsed. And then next minute I found myself in hospital. And I remember when I woke up, the doctor asked me, why do you want to kill yourself and your baby? Lynn, I didn't even know I was pregnant. I didn't. I didn't know. Wow. And I will say that was like a wake up call for me. Because all this time was being beaten. A lot of people would ask, where was Martha always staying there? I kept on running to my mom all the time. Sometimes I would go 
hata sioni unless nishikwe mkono cuz ni vile nimechapo nimefura but my mom will say my son cannot do this when you limchokoza what and i remember even for me now to be taken to the hospital was now this time my cousin who used i told you when my mom relocated we, we used to the live with my cousin yes she was the one who would always come and try and tell go and tell my mom i'm being beaten to come and rescue me she will not do anything so when i was burnt by the iron box what she did she went and called the sisters now and now when the sisters came they were looking for this man to be arrested he was nowhere to be found and for me i saw it was nothing because lena had reported a million times and i used to wonder nani anamtoa and we'll come to there to know who alimtoa lin so i got this wake up call when i was in the hospital and when i just i was just discharged i decided ile kidogo nimejiwekea because now i've lost my job i don't have a job because you cannot be always missing work because of kuchapwa yes. i cannot even face people not forgetting ama merchandise ama promoter so unapatana na watu wengi and i'm tired of being asked question kweli kila siku unapatanga accident kila siku unaangukanga because unashindwa utaambiwa watu nani wanakuchapanga kila siku why can't you walk out mm -hmm. but you see <coughs> every time i would go to my mom and she could not help me in the evening even in evening this person would just come and tell me na kuambianga there is no where you can go Nobody will ever take care of you. Nobody will even love you. You think you're beautiful. If your mom cannot even help you, who do you think can help you? You are nothing. You are trash. And all those words. So, I will not go. Mm -hmm. I will not go. Mm. Then I will just stay there. Mm. You know. And so when... The doctor told me where I want to kill myself and the baby. I think I got a wake up call. So I went and looked for a house. A four, uh, it was 400. Mm -hmm. Toilet was 5 bob. Bathroom was 10 bob if you want to take a shower. A gallon of water was a 1 bob. And now that's how I started now hustling. Because I knew I had a baby coming. And I wanted to give the best to my baby. So I started Vibarua, washing clothes, uh, clothes for people, looking for scrap metals, old newspaper, would lock door to door. And when this man realized I started living alone, he started timing me along the streets. Every time I would come to my house in the evening, I would meet him and he would beat me. And he was those kind of people because of the cult that he was. Nobody would interfere. He was in a cult? Yes. Which cult? Mungike. Mungike. Yes. So nobody would interfere. And those, those are the years I was So, when I would, I would be beaten. And not only beaten, done so many bad things. Some... You don't even wonder how to put them. <laughs> so, I nursed my pregnancy until delivery. And during all that time in Apigua, I never knew if you were beaten, you should go back to the hospital. So, when it was due for me to go and give birth to my baby, I thought that my baby will bring joy, but I went into labor for over four days. And after going all that pain. Alone? Yes. Your mom? I remember she came twice when I was in hospital and she will just find me still on labor. And when I delivered that baby, then three hours later, my daughter died in my arms. I asked God so many questions, so many. I asked God, why have you taken away the only joy? 
I thought I had left because my marriage collapsed. And the only thing that kept me alive was your daughter. The only thing that I knew will tell me, Mom, you're beautiful because I've never been told, I've always been told I'm useless. I'm nothing. I can't make it. You've taken away her. Where do I go? Where do I turn to? Where have you abandoned me? You know, what have I done to deserve this? I never got answers. But I remember the doctor told me, your daughter's death have been caused by all the things you've been going through. You can see even how the baby is. It's like a corner injury is PIA. So you have been beaten and you never knew you were supposed to come to hospital. So that was when my mom came when I was discharged. And she took me in. And within no time, the post-election violence broke. So we had to relocate from Dandora to Kar Karibangi. from Karibangi to Dandora. Mm. <coughs> and this time now my mom started becoming sick. She would swell her legs. Her legs would change colours. So even her her hotel was demolished because Karibangi was very bad. Yes. So when we went to Dandora, I started hustling again. Because now we have to pay the house. I need to take care of her too. Yeah. So I continued with my hustles. And it reached a point and I decided maybe let me just turn to God. Also to help me and to pray for my mom to be well. Because now her sickness is really draining me. It has reached a point even the agents of the house have started taking us to chief. Tunakuja kuchoto vitu because we cannot afford to pay the rent. And so I decided to start going to church. And I started going to church in town because I had stopped going to church. Don't forget, this man never allowed me to go to church. So for me, I had forgotten everything about church. So I, it's like I was going back to God again. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought, I started even maybe saying, maybe God took away my baby because I had I abandoned, abandoned church. Yeah, you see. So I started going to church and this church I was new. So the, the founders of the church, the man and the wife, the wife noticed me. So one day she gave me an opportunity to introduce myself to church because she wondered, who is this girl? She never misses car church. She's always punctual in church. Kesha, she's mm. always in church. Mm. Who is this girl? Mm. <coughs> so I introduced myself and everybody got to know me. So when I was, the service was over, one of the junior pastors followed me mm. and told me, oh, and Ms. Kionashi Dandora, nene, nene, nene. I also live in Dandora. We always have some fellowship. So let's exchange contacts. Even we'll be coming together to church. So because I knew, the back of my mind, I knew you can never get any harm in church. Mm. You're in the right people. Mm. Uh, you found the right shoulder mm. to lean on, mm. you know. Mm. And so I ran to I, yeah, I ran to him and we, we exchanged contacts. And so after some time, he told me, Martha, because you've been suffering, getting a job, you've always been doing these casual jobs, uh, I have friends who can get you a better job, mm -hmm. send me your CV mm. and uh, I'll get you a job. So because his house and my house were a distance, I took my CV to him and we had a fellowship that day and that was it. That was it. So some time later now he called me and he told me I've got a new job. Actually the person who's giving me a job is in my house. Kindly come. Come so that you meet him. So you see me I'm going innocently and very happy because I've gotten a job. So at the back of my mind as I'm going I know hey gotten a job I'll be able to pay my house rent. I'll be able to put up a business for my mom again. Immediately she recovers. You know they'll be over. So Lynn, I went mm -hmm. and um, I knocked his house. He used to live in a Kawan room mm. and he opened the door. So the door, when you used to open the door, mm -hmm. so when I got in, he was behind the door. Mm. So immediately he locked the door and attacked me. So I'm unaware, so I'm defenseless. 
because you know you've gone to meet someone and you know nothing is going to happen mm -hmm. so this man is already prepared and this man has already groomed you because you've been fellowshipping together so you don't even have those thoughts that anything can happen lean we struggled but he overpowered me not forget i was already attacked defenselessly i did not i was not aware yeah. Yeah, and stop feeling like the, you have, stop feeling the need to want to say you so would have defended yourself. You are not aware. He raped me. Okay. And told me, pack and go. And I told him, how? My clothes are torn. He threw a shit to me. And I went home, I asked myself so many questions. I asked God, where are you? I have so much on my table. Why would you allow your own servant to take advantage of me and throw me outside? How do I even tell my mom she's still sick? What's the name of this person? It's called Pastor Sami Cairo. Pastor Sami who? Cairo. Pastor Sami Cairo. Mm -hmm. So, I went home, and at the back of my mind, I started now asking myself, am I sick, or what has happened? So, a month later, I started feeling bad. And I went to the doctor, and at the back of my mind, I knew maybe I'm sick. I told him, just, I need you to do me tests, on STDs. And the doctor's like, what is wrong, Martha? I'm like, see, I'm going to a QIV, you, you, you puke, you feel dizzy, maybe I'm sick, I don't know. So he told me, I've done all the tests. You have no STD, you have no, the only problem you have, you're pregnant. I remember I sat down and asked God, are you not tired of frustrating my life? Are you not tired of allowing me to go all those days, you know? And so I called him and I told him I needed to see him. <coughs> so I went to his house and I showed him the results. I told him after whatever you did, these are the results. And he looked at me. And he sent me a thousand bob on my phone. And told me, go and flash it. This is when I'm building my career. You cannot destroy my career. You're not even my class. And I remember I asked him, I may not the first girl. How comes you know abortion is 1,000 bob? And he told me it's not my burden alone, it's also your burden. Then I hated myself because I asked God if a minister of God can do this to me or can think of me like this, what about all the men out there? I have a sick mom. I don't have a stable job. You have debts to claim and rent arrears. This is a baby coming. I've been told to abort it. Where do I turn? How do I even start? I wished death. I prayed for death, but death never came. <laughs> I tried to take away my life, not once, not twice. But I kept on waking up. I hated that baby, all through. I hated that baby because I was not ready. And no one, you are telling no one in charge? No. I stopped even going there. 
the only person I told was the pastor in charge. <laughs> and he told me, I've called him and he has denied. Okay. So there's nothing I can do. What's the name of this church? That time it's called, called Jesus Manifestation. Mm -hmm. So, Lynn, I decided to go to another church. And I had not even stayed in that church for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we are heading to. I, I hated churches because one day we were in the church and I'm pulled amongst the congregation and I'm told the Holy Spirit has said it is my mission church kwanza because you kona mimba. And I asked myself, if the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit has spoken, where was this Holy Spirit? <laughs> when the same minister of God was taking advantage of me, then where are we safe, Lynn? Where are we safe? Where are we safe? <laughs> and since then, I hated churches. I went back home. I cast even God. <laughs> And I kept on wishing I sleep and never wake up. I would look at myself as my tummy grows. <laughs> and I would hate that baby. I saw like the baby had just brought calamities in my life. <laughs> and so I kept on going on with the journey pregnancy. I hid it because even my own mother came to know I was pregnant when I was one month to delivery. Okay. And she was told by the neighbor. And so one day she sat me down and I told her everything and she told me, it's good you never aborted. A child is a blessing. And so when I was going to deliver my baby, it happened I was going on my clinic, Lynn. And Pumwani, there's the clinic area. So when I was going for my clinic, I started feeling pain. And so when I told the nurse, they told me, I think we miscalculated because it's January. Today's January, your last clinic. You're supposed to deliver on February. And already we can see the babies on the way. So I was rushed to the, ho uh, to the main mm. labor room. Mm. But because of the things I was going through, I think I was so much under stress and mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. I was forced to go for an CS. So I called my mom and told her, I'm not going home. I've been admitted. I'm going for CS. Kindly bring for me the baby's clothes. But I remember when the doctor told me, you're going for CS, and this CS is a 50-50 thing. Yeah. We either save you or the baby because your pressure is very high and we can listen to the beats of the baby. Your baby is at risk. God works mysteriously because Lynn, I felt a strong connection between me and my baby and I started praying for forgiveness, for hating my baby and I told God, <laughs> don't take away this baby. I promise to love him or her. I'll give him the love that he needs for a mother and a father. It does not matter even if the father rejected him at conception. But help me not to ever have any problem that will force me go back to look for his father for help. You see, so Lynn, I, I delivered my baby though he went to nursery for a whole week because he had problems of breathing. Mm -hmm. But God kept me going mm -hmm. and God had my prayers and I was given my baby a week later and I went home. Mm -hmm. 
And today, thank God, because when I look at my son, he's one of those people, he tells me every day in the morning, Mom, you're beautiful. Mom, you're gorgeous. Mom, you're amazing. Those words that I kept on missing to hear. How old is he now? 12 years. Mm -hmm. And actually, we share birthdays. You? Oh. Yes. So, I went home, mm -hmm. and our life continued. And God also healed my mom. And I got a job with Coca-Cola and Nairobi bottlers. And I was able even now to give my mom another business. And uh, I started living on my own. So I, I moved out from my mom's house and I started living with my son. Because mm. I, I really wanted to create that so mother and son moment, mm. you know. Mm. So, but my mom was comfortable. Mm -hmm. I left her with a very good business running, yeah. you know. And that time she had even started going to Kikomba. She had her sewing machine. She was doing well. <coughs> and so God blessed me. And I never had anything that would make me think of looking for my baby daddy. No. I was okay. Until 2020. When COVID came in, everything went black in Kenya because people lost jobs. I was in the hotel industry. And uh, before the lockdown March, Feb, beginning of Feb, I was leaving work on a Saturday, going down to Sunday around 3 a.m. in the morning because I was working in a bar and restaurant area. So, you know, weekends how it can be te yeah. very hectic. Yeah. So, I got home at around 3, took a shower, and slept because I knew Sunday was always my off day. Yes. So, I'm sleeping and I receive a call from the younger sister of my mom around 4 a.m. Mm. And I'm so shocked because I wonder why will auntie call me at 4 a.m. in the morning? Is there a problem? Mm. So she calls me and tells me, I'm so sorry I've woken you up. I'm like, I had not even slept because I've just come like an hour ago. Mm -hmm. She tells me, has your mom called? And I'm like, no, is there a problem? Is she sick? No. Wait for her to call you. And then you let me know. Yeah. So I drop my phone down. And immediately my mom's phone comes in. So I pick it. And my mom is crying. And I ask myself, why is she crying? So she's like, mom, come and help me. So and so wants to kill me. You mean me scare the buyer? Ama. So, and she drops the phone immediately. So I, I call back my aunt. And my aunt asks me, has she told you yes? And I ask my aunt, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. Why will that man be beating her? Who is this man now? My ex. Huh. So lean, at was in one plus one. Yes. It's not two. Yes. So I tell my aunt with Chomoka, then my aunt is like, it's too early. You relax. Because we don't even know him if you call a pigana. And so I'm so restless. I cannot. So around six I I just wake up, I call my aunt and I'm like, I'm on my way. So she tells me, Okay, I'm also on my way. So I arrive before my aunt. Because now this time my mom had already shifted now from Kari uh, Dandora yes. and went back to Kariubangi. Yeah. Because some issues arrived so she had to come back to the same same house where mm. we had been given a house by my grandmother yeah. and she came here now after my grandmother passed on my yes. grandmother passed on oh. about 10 years ago yeah. so she's here so I leave my house and I get to her house and I get before my aunt so the house is open, the door is open, mm -hmm. but curtain in my angusha. So, you have to put a curtain on the door. Yeah. So, I do this, the curtain, mm -hmm. and I get into the house. And I find this man in a vest. You see, and I find this man in a vest. And a short. On my mom's coach, very comfortable. Kama babo anyumba.
and immediately my aunt gets in. I, I didn't utter a word. I was speechless. You can imagine what ran through my mind. So my aunt comes in immediately and her, she's like, what's going on? Unafanya nini uku? Weo, uyu anafanya nini uku? Hii nyumba tasia yako, hii nyumba ni ya shushu. Yani our mother, we just gave you. What is this man doing here? And you, what are you doing here? And this man does not even move. So my mom says, he has been beating me. So he, analizwa, he beats you as who? The last thing I can remember, this is the same guy we were looking for over 10 years ago when he almost killed your daughter. And this guy says, Kweli. So, anamuta na jinake. Hajai wambia we are man and wife over 15 years. Guy. Guy. The only thing I do Kai, is walk out and go to my house lead. I just lock myself and cry and ask God why again, why? And the wounds that I thought were healed open up. Did mom not say anything? Did she not counter? Did she not say it's a lie? Did she not? What hurted me most was when the sister asked her, is it true? Yes. And why would you do this to your daughter? She said, Aliniambia wa China. When I, when I went to my house, I asked God. We are always told if there's anyone who cannot hurt you, it's your mother. But that was not the case for me. And immediately when this man said they've been together for over 15 years, I remember now, that's why every time I would go to her for help, she would not help me. He was always on his side. So you were sharing your husband with your mom? I felt so badly. I went to my house. And that Sunday, I remember, in the, I didn't even have time, even even to ask God, you know, I, I just looked at myself and I asked God, why did you create me? So everything that man used to tell me is true. I'm worthless. I'm useless. No one can love me. No one can appreciate me. Because if they are with the same woman who gave birth to me, who claims she carried me for nine months, and she can do this to me, what about those people I don't know? Do you think your mom is the one who was bailing him out every time you would go report him to the police? He confessed, yes. And so, <coughs> I remember two weeks later, it was not even two weeks, days later. One of the sisters called me and told me, your mom has said, uh, and she's sorry. She's actually tired because they've been fighting every day. So she's tired of being Yokubutana na Pigo. So Lynn, I didn't even ask her any question. 
I didn't. I forgive her. And I told God, I don't want to ever remember. She's still my mother, I forgive her. And when March came in, March of 2020. 2020. Now my mom felt sick. To an extent, she could not walk. Allow me before we get to March 2020. Mm. There's this period where you've come home with your baby, mm. with your son. Mm. You're living with your mom. Mm. You've started hustling. Mm. You've moved out. Mm. So at the point where you're living with your mom, mm. your mom is still in a relationship with this man. So is where it? were they meeting? I would say maybe they were his place. He, he used to come home when I'm not home. Mm. Because I started mm. working in the hotel industry mm. when my baby was six months. So ma your mom was taking care of the baby? Yes. So for me, and all the places I've ever worked, I've always worked night shift. Okay. So during the day, I come in the morning, I'm so tired, I sleep by 2 a, a p.m. Yeah. Nimeamka, nimeanza yeah. kuji prepare kuhu yeah. the job. Yeah. So... Maybe I'll go na patana. Maybe kwa nyumba kama sijui. I don't know. Yeah. You know. But they were still together. Yes. So when March came, ma, uh, now mm. I've, this thing have happened mm. beginning of what yes. February? Yeah. 2020. That's this when you are finding out. Yes. Yes. And then March comes, she becomes sick. Yeah. She's now even cannot walk. Her legs are swollen to an extent in a tua maji. So we, she's taken to the hospital. And after some tests and all that, she's told she has DVT of the leg. So she's admitted. Yeah. And by the time she's admitted, her leg, inya myote imimwagika, one of the leg. And uh, so whose burden is it? Yours? Mm -hmm. You take it? Yeah. I forgive her, so I take care of her. And where is this other, where is the guy? <laughs> I don't know. So, she's admitted, she goes through operation, she goes through blood transfusion, bill comes, comes. Yes, the sisters chip in, but you see, but the new ten yanani, niyangu. And because that time where I used to work, I was a senior, a, a bit senior. Yeah. So when people were being told to go home, yeah, I was not told to go home, but I was under half pay. Yes. So because of always borrowing permission, going to the hospital, you know. Yeah. I think someone just got an opportunity to destroy my image at work. And I was fired and I was not even paid even a cent. So all my saving, is wapi? Kwa hospital. And then she's admitted, but uh, she's discharged, but hijaishi hapo. She comes home, akona badage kutoka hapa, because she has been done skin grafting. So she's supposed to go today for uh, dressing, skips tomorrow, go the other day. I live in Thika Road, and the hospital she's going, it's all the way to Othero Wayaki, St. Peter's Orthopedics. She uses Uber, she has to pay for dressing. So every trip, including Uber and dressing, comes to 2,500. So you can imagine, she goes on Monday, she skips on Tuesday, on Wednesday she goes, on Thursday she skips, on Friday she goes, on Saturday she skips, on, Saturday, on Sunday she goes. Mm. So in a week she goes? Four times. So two, five times four? Ten K. Am I working? No. She needs me. That's only for the hospital. We are buying drugs. I have a child in the house. I have a house to pay. We have to eat. I'm alone. And that continued until December 2020, when my mom was back on her feet. She walked and she went back to her house. But during this time she's in my house, it went to an extent. She daily to Kula, lean. I found myself in depths because I had to do what I had to do for the sake of my mom. Even when kids resumed in school November, my son could not 
because he went and he was sent home because of school fees and I had no choice. And I remember that day, my son came home and he asked for something to eat and we had nothing. So I told him, so I told him, go there, put you some fruits. And that, the owner of Kibanda told him in Kikuyu, about the Ure Nyukwa, I had the Ure Nagura, I can all go Banadari Hagamadiri. Go tell your mom to pay her debts. All she does is borrow money, borrow and never pay. Lynn, my son came and told me. And the worst question I've, I always prayed never to be asked. That was when my son popped in. He asked me, Mom, where is my dad? Where are we suffering? <laughs> then I locked myself in the bedroom and asked God why. I prayed to you when I delivered this baby that you should never allow him. Do you ask me such a question? Why have you allowed it? Why have you allowed this day to come? What oh, do I tell him? How do I start? No, no, so I just locked myself in the bedroom. I thought of just scrolling on social media to look for him because there's a time I had seen him on social media. He may be in Boston. And so I saw him and... Now these are Sami Cairo? Yeah. Yes. So I got his number. I called him. How did you pick. get the number? It was on social media. Okay. So I called him. He didn't pick, but he was online. So I texted him. On WhatsApp? Yes. And he responded. What did you text? I said, hi. My name is Martha. I'm so and so. Do you recall me? He said, yes. And I said, I don't want more. I just want you to help your son and your son to get to know you. I've not looked for you over 10 years. And it's not my wish to destroy either your family or your reputation. All I want is you to help your son because I'm at a position I'm not capable of giving him what he needs. Yes. You know? Yes. And after that, he never replied. He blocked me. He blocked me on all social media f platforms so that was when my son knocked now the door and just God I remember after praying that prayer God worked mysteriously because a friend of mine we prayed together mm. called me and told me okay I wanted to come today and I could not be able to come receive something I've sent you Mukule for today. So by the time I opened the door, I had something out to give my son. So we walked with him, I bought him something, and so that question, Ikaenda. Ikaenda, of which I thank God for. Because mm. you see, it came because he needed something that day. He needed something to eat. Yes. And immediately, Nilimpea. Chakula. Sorry, Kaisha. Today I always say we are mama ni malaika, to ni mungu tu alimtumia. So, tukaendele alim, tukaka, my mom recovered and she went back to her house. So even when we are having all these troubles, nini nini, now I had already started my online business for clothes. Yeah. Because I had to do something to put food on the table. Yeah. Because that is even akuna mtuange kwa jiri kazi. Yeah. So in the year 2021, January, mm -hmm. I decided, ah, it's been long. I've not seen mom. It's been a month. Today being a Sunday, why don't we go and visit her? At, at this point where you really want to visit her, this is your mom. Mm. When you are taking care of her, she's sick. Mm. 
is there something in your heart that wants you to have this conversation that wants you to be like what i say wh wh during that time yeah i really wanted to ask so many questions yes but with the condition she was in yes i felt <sighs> i was i was i would pressure her mm. and at the same time at the back of my mind i had already forgiven her so i said i don't want to die to mm. i told god mm. because you've given me the grace to forgive her allow me just to let go what so 2021 to metoka church yes. i'm like i just need to go say hi yeah i see how she's doing mm. so i don't need to make a phone call no sinikwetu yes do you make a phone call when you're going to visit your mom no you badge in because yes. you know she's there yeah and that's home yes so to catch gari me and my son yeah and we went so this is another place i always say yeah. god works again mysteriously so we get to the to the gate we are getting in my son asked for lollipop so i give him 10 bob to go buy lollipop as i get in little did i know god was preventing something for my son and you'll see why when i got in the door is still open katini miangushwa so i go and what i see I turn back, I meet my son coming, and I tell him, Shushu is not around, let's go home. What did you see? I met them, having their quality time. And that was not, that was not, that was just nothing to them. Did mom not try to she didn't even follow me. Okay. Is this your mom? She didn't even call. But I remember I called the sisters and told the sister, one of the sisters who is very, very close to me up to today. Sister to your mom? Yeah. Now your aunt? Yeah. I called her and told her, how I told Jachana. At that particular moment, yes, I went home again in my bedroom because I don't want to. I don't want my son to see me. And then I asked myself, for how long? Where is that God that people say is there? Where is He? Where is He allowing me to face all this? Where is He allowing me to see all this? What crime have I committed that cannot be forgiven? <laughs> this is too much of betrayal. It's too much. I can't handle it. I can't. I've been through thick and thick with this same woman 2020. I'm in debt that up to today I pay. Up to today, Lynn, I pay. <laughs> I lost my job because of her. I sacrificed my son's education because of her. Why? Why stab me again? Why? Where did I ever go wrong? Was I not meant to be born? And so I just decided just to keep quiet and just be on myself. But that was not enough, Lynn. Three months later, the same, same year, not talking to her, not talking to anybody in the family because even if they knew, nobody ever thought of just wanting to find out how is Waipan doing. What is going through her mind? It is so important. A lot of people ignore just because they think, then <laughs> you're a grown up, you can face everything. No, but ignorance has caused so many deaths.
depression has caused so many people going mad because there's no one to ask them, are you okay? How are you feeling? How are you coping? They think everything is just okay. <laughs> and three months later, again, 4 a.m. in the morning, I receive a call. Now it's from her. <laughs> and she tells me, can you talk to this person and tell him, acha kukujanga asubui kama amelewa na pigia mbaka watu makelele kwa plot, oh my god. I called the same same sister that I have told you we are close and I asked her what more do they want from me? Have they not hurt me enough? Why oh, call me? I found what I found out. It's been three months. I don't talk. I don't communicate. Mono ni pigia simu ni ambi volin. Ata ishima yeshua li meisha. Ata utu. Kuli mini kona roho ya mawe. Kuli mitu ni kona roho ya mawe lini. From there, that's when I decided I just need to be alone. Let them do what they want to do. If that's what makes them happy. But me, I hold no grudges, Lynn. I just want to be me and my son. My son is my happiness. My son is everything. And God to help me not to raise my child how I was raised and to give my child the support and the love that he needs. Because I came to realize being a mother, it's not only bringing in a child. It entails a lot, a lot, a lot. Mm. And I would want to be the best mother to my son. And for me to be the best, I need to distance myself from the people who have betrayed me, who have shown me rejection, who have faked love, and it was not real love. Because all I needed was true love. All I needed was someone to hug me. All I needed was a sincere shoulder to lean on. All I needed from childhood was someone to look me and tell me, you're beautiful, yeah. you can make it. Mm -hmm. But you've had, I started being told I'm useless at the age of 11. I'll dig myself a grave, but today, I tell God, I will make it. Yes. Yes. I will make it. Yes. It does not matter what I've gone through, but I know there is a God in heaven. Yeah. If today I'm still alive and my son is still alive, I will make it. You will? You I will make it. A huge believer. There are no coincidences. And now, coming to you, mm. Lynn, I remember when I was washing clothes for people, you once called me no canipe and go. We were six women. You gave us clothes in your house. You asked for one of the ladies' number. You sent her 1200 and told her to buy for us unga each. And when all this happened, I remember I was looking for you and I could not find you. 
until yesterday when we just bumped, bumped to each other. You looking at me, I saw you, and even where we were, people were like, what is not happening? Why are these women crying? Why are these women hugging? Why are these women inseparable? You know, you know, I, I, you know that's why it started saying I did not understand the hug until we sat, until you told me, Lynn, you know, can't recall me. I, I couldn't hint. I, I had no, I had zero idea who but you were. But when I said that, everything clicked. And you told me, that was 2020. Was it 2020? No, 20, 20, 2019. 2019. Yeah. I was just, I, I used to live in Goomba. You used to pass there. And I was yeah. passing by the road and you know, you the women, they sit yeah. like this. Mm. And I just wanted to like give clothes and I remember calling all of inside mm. my house and I, I well now when you were telling me mm. yesterday I I, I, I I you know I looked at you and I'm like this is almost three years later yeah. and, and then when you because Lynn you see if, if, today even when I when I when I see those women Kai I might not be in a position Maybe to give them something that like you gave us. But I've always told God, if today I sell clothes online, even then one day you'll change their story. Because every time we'll see it, if you hear their story, they, they just need someone to tell them you can make it. Mm. They just need someone to, to encourage them, just to give them hope and to give them a voice. Because yeah. most of them are voiceless, mm. are voiceless. And today I would want to say, you know, most people will say, and I like the way you always say, don't judge someone because why are you in a toxic relationship and you're not living? There are reasons. And not, and, not, and not unless you sit down with that person. Like for me, I was, I kept on being told, nobody will ever accept me. Because even if I ran to my mom, she was never there for me. So you see, most people are in those toxic relationships because of the words they are being told. And you know they sink because you have not met someone out there to tell you a positive word no. to give you a wake-up call. Mm. And you see, the society will still judge you. The society will still judge how are you raped. Unless you're in that person's shoe. Mm. You never know. Mm. You never know the pain they go mm. through. Mm. And it's not only women who are raped, even men are raped. And before you are raped, that person grooms you. Mm. They groom you. They groom you to an extent you never get a negative mentality about them. Mm. This, this person that um, raped you, I know he's a huge person yeah. right now yeah. in America mm. and I'll obviously even reach here Kenya. even here in Kenya mm. and I'll uh, obviously reach out to him for his right of reply mm. but I know he knows he knows because you've spoken about it yeah. before yeah. has he reached out mm. to you no has he reached out to anyone ne near you no he has not mm -hmm. yeah do you think he will always deny 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 yeah, maybe try and call him right now. Can can we try? Yeah. Um, director, do not change. Please pass me my work phone. It's inside there. I think we need to try and call some few people. The purple. I think we need to call uh, some few people. His number. He's in Kenya right now. Yeah. Okay. If I'm not wrong. Okay. You can put for me his number okay. here. The person you have called is not reachable. Uh, we will uh, notify you when the mobile subscriber is back. He's off if you wish now? to leave a voice yeah. message, then please do so after the tone. Please record after the beep. Press any key to stop the recording. <coughs> Uh, hi, uh, Pastor Sami Cairo. Uh, my name is Lynn Gugi. I'm a journalist at uh, Lynn Gugi Media Network. And I'm here with uh, Martha. And uh, obviously, I, I know you guys, you've communicated. And she alleges that um, 
you raped her how many years ago? That's 12 years ago. Uh, 12 years ago. And uh, she has also communicated to you. You communicated to him in 20? In 2020. In 2020. In 2021. Uh, asking you to come through for your son. And you blocked her. So I just wanted to find out from your end. And I hope this message uh, reaches you. I just wanted to find out from your end. And obviously offer you a right of reply. So please do call me through this number or my email address, which I will text you right now. And press one sorry. to save. Yeah. Press we need to voice save. Voicemail huh? is successfully saved. Okay. Thanks for using voicemail. Yeah, so I think that one has saved. I'll also send him a text message. Mm -hmm. So we can also hear what he has to say. But have you spoken to anyone around his circle? No. No one. There is a time yes. I tried to. No, I tried not to communicate through a different number. Mm -hmm. And I remember someone picked the phone from the church mm. and uh, told me to leave a message at Isami Ako, Ako Deliverance Service. Mm -hmm. They have this, I think, um, uh, afternoon service and all that. Yeah. So for me, at the back of my mind, I, I, I just talked in Kasema. Maybe it's because just because you call someone with true mm. call energy mm. and Dika, mm. maybe she, he saw and decided to give, you know, yes, someone. someone. So me from there, I decided. Yeah, because I'll, I'll not, I'll not, I'll not put, I'll not even communicate again to him. Yes, mm -hmm. I'll just move on. Yeah, and at the right time, yeah. I'll be able to you know, uh, face my son and, and tell him the truth mm -hmm. so that he would not keep on asking me. Yeah. Yeah. And I thank God because I've, I've been trying to talk to him slow by slow. I know it hurts so much, but the response that my son gives me, it just strengthens me mm. because my son always tells me, thank you, mom, you're not a murderer. Because I, I, I tell him the truth. Yeah. I was even offered money to get rid of you. Mm. So mm. at he, his age, he knows what mm. death is. Eh? Mm. So when he looks at me and tells me, Mom, thank you yeah. for not killing me, yeah. I feel proud of myself. And you should be proud of proud yourself. I proud of myself. Yeah. And nowadays, when every time I look at him, every time he tells me I'm beautiful, mm. I feel so happy mm. because those are those words that every woman needs mm. to be told mm. and misses mm. to be told. Mm. Yeah. And obviously you spoke about something like how could you have been raped? It's like people don't think people Actually can... Actually the society judges people wrongly so much, which is very bad, Lynn, which is very, very bad. Mm. And I'm very sure today, Lynn, you will just decide today, every person who has been raped by the so-called ministers of God and has a child and they don't take care of Wajitokeze. Lynn, you'll be shocked. Mm. Mm. You'll be shocked. Mm, do you think he's the kind who will come and say, I want DNA? Even if he wants, I'm ready. I'm ready mm. because I'm sure. Mm. I'm now, sure. Now, can we call mom? Yeah, try and call him. Okay. she's not picking you know guys there's a reason i'm doing this because we never want someone to say mm. they we never reached out mm. to them and i know this is painful but let's try the last now the man right i don't have the man's number you don't have his yeah, number I then it's have. okay you, you will it's, <coughs> sorry. it's all right it's okay let me just try mom one last time right mm. just give me a second
So do you suspect they are still together right now, even right now? I think they are still together. Mm. I will say that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So after we aired the first interview, yeah. they came together. I remember I was not I was not aware. So they came together. They came all of them together with their sisters. And um, when they first came to my house, it's like I was being attacked, you see. And that was when I, I, spi I spilled ev everything mm. on the table. Because mm. th the sisters were also attacking me. Mm -hmm. but, uh, why, didn't you, why didn't you tell us you're going through this and all that? And I was like, now you get what I say. Everybody assumes you're okay. Mm. And they've always assumed, but they've never bothered. Because even when my mom was in the hospital, even when she was discharged, I never saw any of them coming even to get to know how am I surviving. You see, all of them, they know what has been going through between yeah. these two people. Mm. And none of them have ever thought of, we sit down and talk as a family and resolve, mm. you see. Mm. So when they came, I was so mad. And just when we had sat down, this man came. And I was like, really? So you come to my house and you even call your, your man. What does that supposed to, to mean? And my, he, so the question was, he was asked again, when were you with her since now you've come? And you're denying. First he came and said, Me mekuja ku deny whatever she calls is saying on media, it's a lie misi kumpiga. Mm. So the, my one of my aunties una we are closer because mm. are you sure? As we're the one who came the last beating. We even looked for you. Where were you? Niali ni feature. That you are mom. Yes. So now the sisters were like I think we were judging the wrong person. You see, so Swipan has every right of what she's going. And I think now she has a right to talk because we came late. And it's true, we've never helped her. Mm. And so now the aunties, my the sisters asked him, so when did you have start having an affair with this, with the mom? Was it after or were you still together with Swipan? And he said, I was, I started my affair with a mom first before Soipan. And why did you then approach Soipan? And you, Mama Soipan, why did you allow and you saw them together? And Soipan brought this man to you as the husband. Why did you not tell you? Kai, daughter. Yes. And I remember Lynn, I told them, can you disappear from my house? I don't want to see you, all of you, even your sisters, because this is not a solution. This is even hurting me more. Right now, how do you feel about your mom? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Mm. My mom is God. Because he has never abandoned me. Because if he did, the times I've tried to kill myself, I will be dead, Lynn. I will be dead. To be a very honest, I will be dead. And how do you feel about this, Pastor? I leave vengeance to God. The Bible says, a lot will come with my name but they are not my servants. He has never helped me, but my son is still standing. Mm. Mm. And he will still stand. Yeah. Mm. And he will go far, mm. with or without his help. This is something he will forever see. Yes. And now he knows the truth. Yes. But what would you want to tell him? That I love him so much, so much, that I'm here as a mother.
to protect him with every blood that I have. And I will not anyone, I'll not let anyone come between me and my son. My son is my joy. He's my sunshine. Mm. He's the only person that gives me the strength mm. to move on mm. every day, mm. to strive more, to work hard, mm. just to make sure that he doesn't lack anything. Mm -hmm. He doesn't feel like if only I had a dad, I would be, you know, mm. somewhere. Mm. No. Mm. And you now, how do you guys survive? How do you make a living? Uh, I, s I sell clothes online. Mm. I'm yet to put up a shop. Mm -hmm. My what's, prayer what's is your online name? Gabriel Collection. Gab I use my son's name. Oh, he's yeah. Gabriel. Yeah, he's yes. called Gabriel. Gabriel Why Gabriel? Um, I love, I love, I love the story of Angel Gabriel, and I, when I, being a Catholic, when I gave birth to my son, I wanted to give him a saint name. So, among all the angels and saints, I chose Gabriel. Mm. And then I gave him his, my dad's name, yeah. Parasenteo. Yeah. So every time I look at him, I see my dad. I, I see my sunshine. I see that child that is, is just everything. Mm. I, I, I cannot put enough words. I don't, I don't know how to say it, but to me, my son is just everything, mm. everything. Mm. And a lot of my friends tell him, Wapi handbag yako, because I don't leave him. I'm always with my son everywhere mm, I mm, go mm. when he's not in school. Mm. And um, oh also, no. through what I went through, yeah. I opened a YouTube channel. Okay. I try to tell people, mm -hmm. I try to educate people about even red flags mm. and the types of relationship one gets to. Mm. Okay. And also, try to talk to single mothers mm. that it's not the end of life. And like I said when I was starting, I'm not single by choice, no, no. Mm. I, I still believe there's true love mm -hmm. and there's that right partner for each and every person. Yes. It's just that at times we, we fall in the wrong trap mm. and it's kawaida. Mm. Even today before you get to your destiny, mm. you, along the way you meet a lot of, you come across a lot of bridges and rivers yes. and you have to cross all of them yeah. for you to reach your destiny. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You said you had dreams of a boutique? Yeah. Uh -huh. I've always wanted to have a boutique because yeah. me, I love fashion. Mm. I love fashion. I love, I love looking good, yes. dressing up and yes. feeling co yes. confident. Yeah. Yeah. So, Cause I you love know, dressing uh, Like people. I was telling you earlier, yeah. mm. it's the way you, where we were sitting mm. now, coming to meet again, mm. it, it's because you walked in mm. and I was like, I love that purple. Yeah. You, you are wearing this very beautiful purple. Mm. And then I, I loved that purple. So when we, our eyes met and you came to say hi, the first thing I was like, I love your <laughs> dress. I'm just like, so you have it in you. Yeah, I yeah. think you really do have it in yeah, you yeah, yeah. and you shouldn't quit on it. Yeah. I I love I love fashion mm. and I also love I love talking to to, to young mothers. Mm. I love talking to uh, to to every young young generation out there because a lot of us make mistakes, you know, and also a lot of us fall in the wrong uh, direction mm. at a very tender age yeah, of because course. of lacking the right people to guide mm, you. Mm. You see, like my case, Lynn, if only, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm insisting of that, yes. if only I got what I wanted at that point, I would not have fallen. Yeah. Yeah. What are you more proud of right now? I'm proud of being the mother that I am today. I've raised a boy, but I don't call him a boy. I call him a gentleman. Because if you see me and my son walking to, to church, you'll say this is a brother and a sister. Because he has grown to be a very responsible child. Yeah. And knowing that the mother was never told she's beautiful or loved, the first thing even before he goes to school, he looks at me and tells me, Mommy, you're beautiful. Because you are. You're amazing. Yeah. And mostly, he's the one who chooses 
for me what to dress. <laughs> so nakuanga na shida when he's in the house yes. and I need to get out. Yes. I might dress something yeah. and by the time you leave the bathroom, yeah. mom nimekubadilishia nguo hiyo hapana vai na hiki atu na hii handbag. Yeah. So nakuanga tu na mtu I feel so comfortable. That's your angel. Yes. That again. Yeah. That's your angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so proud mm. as the mother I've become today. Mm. And I'm so proud that every time I speak out my journey, because this is my journey, I always find that I've impacted so many people mm. and I've given voice to those who are voiceless. Good girl. Yeah. That's it. And the more reason I'm in, in the YouTube channel. Yes. What's the name? It's Martha Soipan. Yes. I always say it's a fraternity. Yeah. It's a, it's it's so so a pan fraternity. Yeah. We give voice to the voiceless. Good. We give a shoulder to those who don't have a shoulder. Good. And I've always said, Martha might have gone through that, but today, I have a very big heart to everyone who feels they need someone to talk to. They need a, a shoulder to cry on. Yes. Come. Yes. We will cry. We will cry. I'll give you enough time to cry mm. because I've come to realize also crying. It's a healing. It's a healing. It's a healing. Yeah, it's it's a a healing. healing. And I pray that one day, yeah. what I've been praying God, I'll come to achieve. What is it? I want to have a fraternity yeah. of raising those women who washes clothes for people. Because those women go through a lot. I was there. You get into someone's house, some will pay you, some will not pay you, some will even harass you sexually mm. Mm. and not even pay you mm. and you've worked for them. Mm. Yes. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing initiative to and think of. And people wameishi wakidhara watu wale wanafuanga. Yeah. Lean. If only you'll talk to some of them. Some are graduates. But there are no opportunities in Kenya. Mm. And that is where you see a lot of people are going abroad. There's so much corruption in Kenya that someone may graduate akona nini and I end up finally because she needs to put food on the table mm. for her kids. Mm. Yes. Mm. You are ex, your mom, the pastor, they will all watch this. Mm. What would you want them to know? For the pastor, I'll tell him, mm. I will not, you will block me and block others. Maybe I'm not the first victim, but vengeance is here and you will not see six feet before you pay for it. For my mom, you still my mom. I've forgiven you. I hold no grudges. But the connection of a mother and daughter, it's never there. And I don't think it will ever come back. The more reason I've distanced myself from you, yeah. for my ex, be careful what you sow, because you shall reap. Before I came into your life, you had a wife and she had a daughter. Don't do what you would not want the same to be done to you. You have a daughter. You frustrated so many women. Think about your daughter. Where will she land? Mm. And to yourself? I'm an iron lady. Oh, yes. I'm a strong woman yes. and today I'm a voice to the voiceless, not because I'm strong, not because I'm capable, not because I'm rich, but because God created me to be whom I am. Mm. And I thank God because if it was not for God taking me through the fires, I will not be where I am today. Good. And you who is there, you feel hopeless, you feel you're voiceless, you feel you have no one to turn to. So Ipan Fraternity is here for you. Good. I may not be able to give you everything that you want, mm -hmm. but I have a very huge heart. Yes. And I also have a very big shoulder that you can just come and a hug. I'll give you a hug. I'll give you a listening ear. Yeah. Because most people lack that link. Mm. Most people lack that. Mm. And to the society, yeah. stop assuming everybody's okay. Take a phone call and give them a call. Mm. Mm. That's what friendship is all about. Yeah. yeah. And how can people reach you? My numbers are 0722 mm -hmm. 6629 mm -hmm. yeah. 
three nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the channel is Mother. Martha Suipan. Yes. And the boutique YouTube. is Gabriel Collection. Good. Yeah. Yes. All my social media handles. Yeah. Martha Suipan. Oh. Yeah. I love you. I love is you there too. anything you think we should have talked about that we haven't touched on? Uh. Maybe you can touch on it. Also, I'll, I would want to to talk to, you know, most people who are in marriage, mm -hmm. they look down on single mothers. Not all single mothers are single mothers by choice. And you that is married, thank God that you're married and your marriage is working. Because the minute you look down on someone, you're not perfect. You're not. You're not special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you should do is p pray for that single mother that is suffering or going through maybe hardship in her relationship mm. for her to be strong like you or maybe to, to be stable like you are. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You okay? I'm okay. You're good? I'm good. Should we wind up? Yeah. Now you're at peace. I'm at peace. Your heart is lighter. <sighs> Your heart is lighter, <laughs> most definitely. So, yeah. yeah, I want to wind up. Uh, maybe before we can wind up, guys, let's just give these people a call one more time. Mm -hmm. uh. Of course, we'll also try and uh, get hold of them uh, mm -hmm. um, later on because we need to know also what they are going to say mm -hmm. just in case they don't pick up. Uh. This is a uh, mother's mm -hmm. mom we are calling. So she's not picking and uh, let's also try calling Pastor Sami Cairo one last time. Oh, the Akendi Mission at the one. Oh, I think his phone is on now. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning too. Pastor Sami, how are you? Fine. Uh, my name is Lynn Gugi. I'm a journalist. Now you are on record because I have a woman here by the name Mother. Uh -huh. And uh, she has um okay, I don't know what happened. Cheni watu wangu ni akikisha niko na credit square ni credit imeisha ama ni yeye amekata just to be sure no we have enough credit eh? I'm sure she will he will not pick mm -hmm. I just want to try as many times guys as possible I'm sure he'll block you now He'll block me. Mm. Oh. So guys, I think as it do I try one last time? This is my cutter marabili. Tatno, tatu. Yeah. Hello? Hello? So guys, I think it's pointless. Huh? Uh, he obviously, um, we obviously uh, try to get uh, him to, because I think these are serious allegations, huh? especially. Okay. 
So I think it's pointless to continue, but if he calls, I'll be sure to update you on what he says or if he also uh, gives out a statement on the same. And as you know, he's also welcome to come and sit here on the show and tell his side of the story uh, because, you know, we are required to give people their right of reply no matter what allegations uh, have been put forward um, about them. But there's one thing I want you to know, Mother. I think you are really brave. And I hope you know there's nothing about this that's your fault. Mm -hmm. And even I, I remember I told my friend uh, Jerry Migui mm -hmm. um, that, um, sorry guys, you might hear some noises. We have a school here and I think the kids are out to play. But I remember I told my friend uh, Jerry Migui mm -hmm. because she, has spent, she had spent so much time people telling her she was ugly, especially her partner. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that even, I don't, I don't know what ugly is. I don't even know why people think there's someone who God created that is ugly you are so beautiful you. you like you are beautiful and what you've gone through not many of us would have survived mm -hmm. me walking in to find my mom and my husband together mm -hmm. Arasi Jui, even when you say you've forgiven your mom you hold no grudges uh Sijui Nini belongs to the Lord N not many of us would even be able to say that mm -hmm. not many of us would sit here mm -hmm. and be able to say it Mungu, you know, mm -hmm. but you've gone through so much. And I remember we met in 2019 for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I know God is going to open so many doors for you. Mm -hmm. And I like speaking positive things mm -hmm. to my guests here on the show because mm -hmm. I keep saying, by the way, let no one confuse. This show is ordained by God. Mm -hmm. You get it. Yeah. And that's why nothing scares me. Mm -hmm. Because in, like this show is ordained. And I like telling and speaking positive things into my guests and saying, you will not sit on my show and your life remains the same and today what you've done you've encouraged so many women so and much. even those people the men of God who go on hurting women and taking advantage because this is not even the first one that I've had mm -hmm. thinking that your day will come your day will not come your day will come stop just, just stop by the way when you hear vengeance belongs to the Lord it's true and I want you to know you are beautiful Thank you are you. gorgeous your son is incredible I like that he affirms this thing to you. You are beautiful. You are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You are an incredible mom. Mm -hmm. And may God open doors for you. Mm -hmm. And may he con I heart yako. Mm -hmm. Not all of us have this heart. Mm -hmm. By the way, let me not lie to you. Mm -hmm. You narrate your story so easily. Mm -hmm. Someone who didn't even think you've been through this much. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that keep fighting. Mm -hmm. Keep creating a safe space for people to come and talk mm -hmm. and hug them. Mm -hmm. And whatever desires you have, because God knows the desires of your heart. May they be accomplished. Mm -hmm. May they be accomplished. Mm -hmm. You coming out and speaking is more than enough. Mm -hmm. You do not know how many people will come out, how many people will feel safe, how many people will be inspired by your story mm -hmm. and your brief. I want you to go home knowing you are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot for you to share your story mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. Normally, I don't repeat stories that have been done uh, somewhere else, mm -hmm. uh, but I said I had to do yours because I feel like God is yet to do what he has to do mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait for you to come back mm -hmm. with a testimony, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and to you, my people, thank you so much uh, for tuning in and watching this episode of LNS. And as always, I want to know what you've learned today. I want to know what your take home in today's conversation is. And we are not going to assume that toxic parents do not exist. Mm -hmm. Toxic parents exist. And if you are watching this as a parent, it's very important for you to know what it is that you are doing to your sons and daughters because you can see. Like, for example, let me ask mother if it's okay for you. How old are you now? Um, over 36. We, let's say we are over 36. <laughs> we are not going to say, but we, we, she, like, mother is over. She's in her 30s, yeah. yeah? And you can still see she's able to relieve the kind of pain her mama has put in her heart. So, parents, do not think that your kids stop feeling the pain the moment they are 18. This generation of us, by the way, there's a conversation I want us guys to have because uh, we met someone, we met a lady in, uh, in the mall, and we were 
were just having a short conversation and she said something. The generation of the 80s and the 90s is a broken generation. We are, by the way, we have the 80s and 90s mostly. This is a generation that is so broken and I hope that's a conversation we can be able to come to cover and hugely because toxic parents have contributed to this aspect. So let me know what you think about today's conversation as we've been speaking, as we spoke, mother's contact details have been on your screen. Her channel is also right there. I want you guys to go and show her so much love that she will wake up and wonder what is happening. Go to her channel. This is the link. This is the name of the channel. Subscribe, like, share, and do not forget to say Lynn sent you. Let's elevate her. I say at the end of the day, the purpose of this show is for us to be able to elevate each other. Is for us to be able to tell, you know, whichever way, financially, spiritually, even that boutique she's speaking about, guys, I know we can do something about it. Whichever way you want to show your support towards her, do it. And as I say, be kind. Be kind to everyone because you never know the kind of things people are going through. I met this woman in 2019 with other women. I could barely recognize her yesterday when we reconnected. But I'm telling you, just be kind to people because you do not know what people are going through. And today, a challenge pick your phone. That person that you're assuming is okay, that person that you've not spoken to for a long time, pick your phone, give them a call, and just ask them, for real, how are you? It could go a long, a long way. I don't do this alone. Obviously, Elegance Fashion Kenya for coming through. First time I'm rocking a sleeveless after CG a long time. <laughs> and you're looking good. For, for real? Am I just saying that? No, but you, you are a designer, <laughs> so I'll take it from you. Thank you so much, my people at Elegance and of course, Westwood Hotel for this space, guys. There's so much things you can come and do here. Wedding, restaurant, swimming pool, conference rooms. Just come and enjoy and of course to the amazing team that does this great work my camera person the legendary director Edwin Ochieng for always coming through with this episode our amazing editor you for compiling this episode and making sure it reaches our audience right on time we appreciate you mommy and of course our other team members David Moredi Chebet Kirui and our amazing mentor Saveli Barashkov Asante Nisana see you guys next time and as I said, after I reach out to those people, we will also include their reply on this episode. And if not, let them know they can always email this address right here and reach out to us for their right of reply. My name is Lynn Googie. Till next time, bye-bye.